I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Friday, August 17th at 7 p.m. Just as the media lives in its echo bubbles, so does President Trump. That was evidence today when he celebrated the tremendous response he's received to revoking John Brennan's security clearance. He must have been aware that a large group of very esteemed intelligence officials who served both Republican and Democratic administrations issued a statement criticizing the move, referring to the, quote, ill-considered and unprecedented remarks and actions by the White House. They also slammed the use of security clearances as a political tool. Many of these top intelligence officials were named to their positions by Ronald Reagan and the Bushes. Some diehard Trump supporters like Sean Hannity defended the move by saying that nobody has a right to a security clearance. True. But good luck finding any reasoned defense of his actions on the websites of mainstream Trump-friendly news organizations such as Fox News, The New York Post, The Washington Examiner, and The Washington Times. You're not going to find it either on sites that are extremely supportive of Trump, including Breitbart, The Daily Caller, and Town Hall. National Review, which highlighted Brennan's lying to Congress as a reasonable justification, uh, justification for the clearance revocation, still said Trump undercut that by saying the motivation was political and argued the move raises serious constitutional concerns. Even serious Trump supporters have to be concerned about how long this animosity against the U.S. intelligence community will be allowed to fester at the White House. What happened to the Republican Party that for decades was characterized by its strong defense and foreign policy and its full-throated support of U.S. intelligence services? Despite what some media outlets will have you believed, there was some bad anti-Trump behavior in the intelligence community during the 2016 election. But Trump's attacks go far beyond what's necessary and now put him at war with top Republican leaders who shouldered the responsibility of keeping this country safe for decades. Tremendous response? I don't think so. I'll address this in today's Alternate Universes segment, the great divide between conservative and liberal media, because it led to a perfect example of the sharp differences that exist in the news world, and also the absurd overreach that is happening on both sides of the media political spectrum. MSNBC at times gleefully celebrated the statement from intelligence officials and, like CNN, spent inordinate amount of time, amounts of time discussing how Trump is a despot and comparing him to banana republic or iron curtain dictators. It wasn't enough to stick to the facts that are quite damning to Trump. They again had to go over the top, opening the door for attacks on the media's behavior to distract from the issue at hand. The conservative side tried to ignore the backlash against Trump as much as possible, often turning to criticizing Brennan's behavior and that media coverage of the controversy. In other news, an alarming Pentagon report says China's military is likely training for strikes against U.S. and allied targets while substantially increasing its military budget. The Manafort jury has yet to render a verdict. The Trump administration is considering pulling back $3 billion in foreign aid. That's a little less than 10% of the foreign aid budget. And it's also ending funding for Syria stabilization projects. Imran Khan took over as Prime Minister of Pakistan and flooding from a monsoon in India killed hundreds, while New York Governor Andrew Cuomo further walked back what he called his inartful comment, insisting that, quote, of course, America is great. Also, Trump has given up on his military parade, at least for now. He blamed it on D.C. politicians trying to gouge the federal government. But a leak from the Pentagon said it was because costs could near 100 million, about 80 million more than initially thought. Defense Secretary Mattis denied those numbers, saying whoever leaked it was probably smoking something. The American Legion, though, came out against it, arguing the money would be better spent fully funding the Department of Veterans Affairs. Finally, if you were looking forward to grilling some steaks and burgers this summer weekend, don't forget to eat some carbs, too. A new study finds that middle-aged people who get roughly half their daily calories from carbohydrates live several years longer on average than those with meat-heavy, low-carb diets. I guess that means we can have cake, too. 
You can find all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. And please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend.